In this video, I'm going to show you how to upload a custom avatar to Somnium Space and VR Chat. The process requires that you use Unity, specific versions of Unity, in fact, which I'll leave a link to in the description box below. And also, you'll need to download the SDKs for either Somnium Space or VR Chat, depending on which metaverse you're hoping to use these avatars in. By the way, there probably are going to be a number of different environments that will allow you to upload custom avatars and if they do have that option quite often it's going to be using this very process by integrating an sdk into unity and doing the upload so this is probably going to have wider appeal to those of you who just want to learn the process of importing an avatar and getting it ready for upload into the metaverse so without any further delay let's go ahead and get started by importing our model into unity so to get started, we're going to open up Unity Hub. If you've already downloaded Unity, you should have also downloaded the Hub, which allows you to access all of your projects and also load multiple versions of Unity, which may be required if you're using different metaverses to upload avatars. So the first thing you'll get when you open up the Unity Hub is the main window. And this is where you can create a new project. If you've only got one version of Unity, you may only see this new button. But if you've installed multiple versions, you can click on the drop down arrow on the right hand side of the new button and select the appropriate version. So for the Somnium Space SDK, we need to be using Unity 2019.2.4 F1. So when you go to the Unity website, make sure you're downloading that specific version, which I believe was released around September of 2019. If you'd like to upload your avatar using VR chat, which we're gonna show in the second part of the tutorial, you'll need to get Unity version 2019.4.31 F1. But for this first part of the tutorial, we're going to be using the Somnium Space SDK. So I'll click on the 2019.2.4 F1 version. I'm going to be creating a 3D project and we're going to give our project a name. So we'll call this Anarchist Avatar for Somnium Space, and you can specify a location where you'd like to save that file. Click on Create, and wait a few moments as Unity prepares all the files and launches the interface for you. And once loaded, you'll see the main interface of Unity. Hopefully you've used it before. If not, I'll give you a quick rundown on the left-hand side. There's a hierarchy window where you'll see your sample scene. In this midsection here is your scene where you can actually see the assets that you load into Unity. In the bottom left-hand corner, there is the project window, which shows you all of the different aspects of your project, including the assets, the scenes, and packages that you use. And on the right-hand side is the inspector tab. So before we do anything else in the project, we're going to install the Somnium Space SDK. To do that, head over to the Somnium Space SDK website link that I'll leave in the description box below. There's an instruction guide and a link to download the latest version of the SDK. Once you've downloaded it, it should appear as this Unity type icon on your desktop or wherever you've downloaded it on your computer. You can drag it into Unity and just drag it into the assets section of the project and release. Click on the import icon that appears in the pop-up window and the Somnium Space SDK will be unpacked and installed into your project. You'll see another pop-up screen appear in the window. Just click on, I made a backup, go ahead. And again, you'll need to wait at least five or 10 seconds, possibly even as long as 20 seconds for all of those files to be unpacked and installed into your Unity project. Once installed, you'll see a pop-up screen appear in the middle of the Unity interface, and you'll be required to log into your Somnium Space account with your username and password. It's detected that I've already logged in a previous version, so I'm already logged in. But if this is your first time, go ahead and enter in your username and password. Then you can close these windows down to get them out of the way. And you'll also notice in the top menu, a new main menu has been created in the project with the title Somnium SDK, and there's various options for you to log back in if you've been logged out, build and upload, manage your content, 
and gives you more information about the SDK along with whether there's any current updates. But we do have the latest version of the Somnium SDK, so we don't need to do anything there. So we're now ready to import our model. Now, if you're coming from my previous tutorials, you would have used Blender to create your custom model in conjunction with Make Human, perhaps. Or if you're coming to this tutorial, just for the first time and you've already created your own custom avatar in any 3D software, provided you export that 3D file out as an FBX file, you should be able to import it into Unity without any problems. If you followed any of my previous tutorials on this topic, you'll know that I used Blender to create this custom avatar coming from a standard make human base. So this file is ready to go. It's been rigged with a humanoid bones and it's ready to be exported. So in order to do that, I just click on File, Export, and Export as FBX. And I'm going to export it into my desktop folder called Anarchist, where I have all of my files. Now, as a matter of precaution, it's good practice to get all of your UV maps into a textures folder that sits alongside your file. So if you're wondering where you can find your UV maps in Blender, go to the shader editor and click on your avatar, click on the material properties tab, and then click on each of your materials. And in the shader window, you can see on the left hand side, all of your textures are showing. And if you want to see where they're located, click on the folder icon, and that will take you to the path where your images are actually stored. Before bringing into Unity, you should have a folder which contains your FBX file and a textures folder which contains all of the textures you've used to create your avatar. So that's gonna make the process of importing into Unity as seamless as possible. I'm just going to maximize the window so we get a better view of the interface here. We're going to go to our Scenes tab in the project window on the left hand side and click on Upload Scene. And this is the scene into which we are going to load our avatar. Now quite often it loads with the rear view, so I'm going to hold down my left mouse key and rotate around and then use the scroll wheel to position out and then pick up the hand and move into the front position here and we have the default avatar that's been incorporated into the Somnium Space upload scene. In order to get a look at the hierarchy of the scene, I'm gonna click on the upload scene icon, click on the drop down arrow if it hasn't been expanded already. The first object is our camera, the second is our environment, and the third is called model pivot. And as, as you can see here, it tells you that that's where you're going to be dropping your model into the SDK and the body builder model has already been loaded by default. So I'm going to delete that model because we don't require that. We're going to be uploading our own model. And now we're going to import our model into the models folder. And there's a couple of ways you can do this depending on how you've prepared your file. So first of all, you can go and grab your 3D avatar file that's been saved usually as an FBX and simply drag it into the assets window select avatar and select import files, select models, click on the models folder and your avatar will be imported. If I drag my avatar onto the model pivot object, you can see that it's imported successfully but the textures are missing. There's a couple of ways you can approach this. I found that after lots of experimenting, the easiest way to avoid this problem is to do what I said earlier and prepare all of your material textures in a folder alongside your FBX file. So as you can see, I've got all of my textures that my model has been using alongside my FBX file. So if I go and grab that folder and drag it into the assets window and avoid importing it as an avatar, just drag it directly into the models window, click on the folder that I just dragged in, and you can already see that those materials have been loaded into the model automatically. So all of our textures have been applied. I realize that I'm missing the teeth textures, so I've just imported them in manually, 
And I'm just gonna drag that in onto the albedo of that shader. And now the teeth have been applied as well. I don't think you would have seen them in this avatar, but I'd rather have them there just in case. So that's it, everything's been reapplied and we're ready to go to the next step. To do that, we're going to click on the models folder, click on our model that we just imported. And then in the inspector tab, click on the models tab. In this first screen, there are some parameters that you could change in the model so that you could optimize it further. This has already been sufficiently optimized, so I don't think we have to do much here. We could leave everything intact. But if we wanted to, we could apply a mesh compression in order to make it more streamlined, and that should help you with the upload process to Somnium Space. We'll leave everything else as is. In the next tab along, we need to set our avatar's bone type, and we need to select humanoid, and we need to select on the apply option and click on the configure option, click on save, and just check that your bones are in alignment on your avatar. I'm gonna to have to use the rotate tool to see this better. And on the right hand side, you can just check that your hips, shoulders, all the different elements have been applied to the avatar. And hopefully if you've rigged up the bones successfully in your software, everything should check out here. I'm not going to go into much detail in this tutorial about bone rigging, but uh, if you find there are issues with your avatar and the way it moves in the metaverse, then it most likely has something to do with errors that are found in the bones that your uh, software couldn't find the appropriate bones on the avatar, but everything here is rigged successfully. And we're just going to click on done and apply. Animation is for those of you that have included an animation on your avatar. And then materials we already looked at before is to reapply any missing materials, which we've already done on our avatar. So we're pretty much ready to upload now. To do that, we are going to go to the upload scene here click on the model pivot, drag your model here, click on the drop down, click on our avatar itself, and then we're going to, in the inspector window here, add a component, and we're gonna search for the avatar config component. And when you click on that, you should see a simulation of a VR headset appear right over your model. Now, if your model is back the front, you could just spin him around, but everything was in place there. So we don't have to worry about that. If the VR headset has appeared too low or too high, you can click on this icon here next to the camera view position in order to edit the height or the different positions on the X and Z axis as well. So this is set at 1.65. I'm just gonna change this to 1.7 so that it goes a little bit higher. So that looks pretty good to me. And we're now ready to click on the build and upload icon in order to get our avatar uploaded to Somnium Space. If you've done everything right so far, you should see zero errors. You may get some warnings and you'll also see how many of the aspects of your avatar have checked out fine. The warnings I've got is for polygon counts and material slot count exceptions, which probably means that it's slightly higher than is expected, but certainly only in the yellow category, not red. So it's not too high to cause a problem. If you're in the red there and your polygon count is too high, you can quit this window, click on your avatar, go back to the model, and you can go and change your compression from low to medium or high. And you can see if that helps out in reducing the complexity of the avatar. I'm gonna click on the model here again, click on build and upload, and then click on the build icon. Enter a name for your avatar. Click on I have read and agreed to the terms and conditions option and then click on upload bundle and your avatar will be uploaded into Somnium Space 
and you can then go and find your avatar under the custom avatar section in the Somnium Space interface. So that's all you need to do to create a custom avatar for Somnium Space. Now we're gonna take a quick look at how you can do the same thing for VR Chat. To do that, we're gonna go back to the Unity Hub. We're gonna create a new project, but rather than click on the new icon, we'll use the drop down, and this time we're gonna select version 2019.4.31 F1. Select 3D project. Give it a name. Click on create. And now we're gonna install the VR Chat SDK by dragging it into the assets window. Clicking on import. But once you've done that, you should see that the SDK appears in the asset window and you'll see that you have various folders that you can click on within the SDK. I'll click on the assets folder and I'll go and grab the anarchist folder which contains both the FBX file and those textures and I'll drag it straight in. Click on the folder and then I'll drag him right into the middle and in the inspector window, I'll click on the avatar and then in terms of position, I'll change all those numbers to zero, zero, and zero to get him right in the center. Click on the VR chat menu on the top and you might be required to enter a login, enter the username and password, and then click on the builder option. You might see some text that's saying that a VRCA avatar descriptor is required to build an avatar. So in that case, we'll need to click on our avatar in the sample scene, and we need to add a component, and we're going to add the VRC avatar descriptor to the avatar. When we do that, you'll see some error messages appear. And the great thing about the VR Chat SDK is that it automatically fixes a lot of problems that are encountered with avatars in VR Chat. So the first one is the avatar contains meshes that were imported with read, write disabled. This must be fixed, so we go auto fix. The next one is the avatar contains skin meshes that were imported with blend shape normals and this isn't allowed, so we can auto fix those. And the final error message is the avatar has mismapped textures, so we're going to auto fix that. And now we have all greens, the overall performance is good, the polygon count is good at 3200, and then we can click on the build and test option. Now, I haven't spent enough time in VRChat with this new login, so it says that before you can upload avatars or worlds to VRChat, you'll need to spend more time enjoying the app. They're doing this for security reasons. When you get the ability to upload, they'll, be, they'll notify me via email and inside the VRChat window. So I'm not quite able to go through the final step right now, but if you have spent enough time in VR chat, you should just be able to click on next and it will take you into the upload screen. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit me up with a like and consider subscribing to the channel so that you're notified of up and coming video releases. See you on the next one. Bye for now.